Jake. What's up? I need your help. I lost my lucky socks. Where was the last place you saw them? So, how do I find my socks without disturbing this? Next stop, Range Creek. Woohoo! Who were these people? What was their life about? I can't wait to start digging and trying to find these artifacts. And you can look back in the past and find out things that you didn't know. I think maybe they just discovered something. It's like a piece of history in your hands. Funding for Sci Girls is provided by the following. The National Science Foundation, supporting education and research across all fields of science and engineering. The National Science Foundation, where discoveries begin. Math and science are everywhere. They're the building blocks of tomorrow. That's why ExxonMobil sponsors programs to get kids excited about math, science, engineering, and technology. So one day, they may become the scientists of the future. Garage band again? No, it's not that. I lost my lucky socks and my science test is tomorrow. Okay, where was the last place you saw them? In my locker. Finding them in your locker should be easy. Have you seen my locker lately? <laughs> Whoa, start digging. But is my locker, it's a work of art. I know exactly where everything is at all times. <laughs> yeah, right. So, how do I find my socks without disturbing this? Uh, well, this one might even stump the Psy Girls. But I'll see if they can help. Thanks, Iz. You're the best. <laughs> I really am. Well, see ya, Jake. This. <sighs> hey, they need to find something and keep track of where it came from. Might not be lucky socks, but it might just work. I think I'm feeling pretty nervous and excited about archaeology camp. I like geology because you can look back in the past and find out things that you probably didn't know. It's like a piece of history in your hands. I can't wait to start digging and trying to find these artifacts. Maybe finding a cool discovery is what I'm hoping. I think I'll be fine with camping without water and electricity and all that stuff because it's outdoors. It doesn't scare me. I love camping a lot. This is my thing. I love learning new things and I can't wait to have a new experience that I've never had before. Hi. Hi. My name is Gates, what's yours? I'm Jazzy. Have you ever been to an archaeology camp like this before? No, actually, I haven't. Have you? No, but I think it'll be a great experience. Oh, I play volleyball, too. I play guitar. So do I. How oh, sweet. That? We have a lot in common. Jazzy and I will make a great team because I love math and she loves English. And she likes science and I like science. I think we're going to get along great. I'm so excited. I know, we're so excited. Brene came and met us at the museum. I started studying archaeology very young. My mom said when I was three was the first time I said archaeology and I couldn't actually say the word right. But by the time I was Jazzy and Gates age, I was already going out and looking at archaeological sites too. Every summer we do a field camp with students so they can get the training in archaeological fieldwork that they need if they want to go into this for a profession. Next stop, Range Creek. Woohoo! Nice. 
Ooh. <laughs> See, this is like a picture of yourself. We were filming each other on the bumpy road. She was filming me, and when I turned the camera, she's like, don't look at me. Oh my god. This is Renee. Say hi, Renee. Hi, Renee. <laughs> Gates. Smile. Dazzy. <laughs> What's the coolest thing you found at Range Creek? So have you found any weapons or toys? Who was the past owner? We asked so many questions with Renee. We spent the entire time talking. How about what kind of bugs are out there? The one thing I know I won't like about camp is all the scorpions and bugs and spiders. Last night the mosquitoes were pretty bad. We do have scorpions on site. They're all over. I saw a cougar this morning, but he was pretty big. I've seen seven bears. I saw two last week. 150, 160 pounds. Pretty big. Anything big, scary that will eat you is basically found up there. I thought Renee was really cool because she answered all of our questions and she just has like this energy. I'm so excited. We're almost there, only a mile away, but it seems to take a lot longer. <laughs> it's beautiful. Let's document this. These are the archaeologists. Students come in anywhere from two weeks to four weeks and they get formal training in excavation and survey techniques. Welcome to Range Creek. Wow, look at that view. We're in Range Creek Canyon, Utah. This site, we think, it's probably Fremont. This week at archaeology camp, we're trying to find out more about the Fremont people, especially their diet and how they ate. We care about the Fremont people because they're native to this surrounding area, and we just want to know who were these people? What was their life about? How did they live? Where did they go? We just have so many questions that we just desperately want to answer. We're going to be investigating wall art, granaries, where the Fremont stored their food, and excavating a site and digging. And then we're going to present it to Renee. Hi, I'm Jazzy. I like to run. I'm on the cross-country team. I like to longboard. I just like all these sports. I'm Native American. I go to these powwows, which is just dancing competitions. At powwows, you don't really take lessons. You just watch and learn. This is my cat. We went to go look at some wall art. I found a feather and I put it in my hair just to get in touch with our culture that we're learning about. Pictograph. Pictograph. If they're painted on the rock. How can you tell if they're picked or painted? There's two types of classifications, a pictograph and petroglyph. A pictograph is painting on the wall and a petroglyph. It's pecked into the wall. Yeah, like etched. This is some of the oldest rock art in the canyon and in all of North America. When you're looking for evidence of what prehistoric people ate in the rock art, sometimes we have clues to the animals that they hunted. They'll actually make pictures of those. And it's your job as the archeologist to try and interpret what this panel means. It could be like a canoe or maybe a weapon. Kind of looks like a goat person. Do you have any idea what they could have got the white from? They probably grounded up some kind of dirt or something white. I would draw it out really quickly and then I'd notice more detail to it and then finally I'd get the shape of it, hopefully get some ideas of what it could be. There's like a something There's right a... there. Oh, oh, I think maybe they just discovered something. There's something right here. A female body and a head and wings. Renee, look at that. <gasps> oh, you guys just found another figure. That's a white anthropomorph. Wow, that's terrific. I haven't seen that figure before on this panel. That's just wonderful. That's what we're hoping for every single day out here. Renee just freaked out. She's like, oh my gosh. I love it when someone makes a new discovery. To find that was really amazing because you feel really important that you actually found something. It's really nice to have fresh pairs of eyes out here. Then the next one is the basket weaver. This one's different from the one before because it's etched in instead of just painted on. The figure on the left dates probably to around AD 500. And then the figure on the right probably dates to about 500 years ago. You can tell by like the color. That's, that's absolutely true. We found one that was hundreds of years old. 
The last one we have is the Fremont panel. These are petroglyphs, which means they're pecked into the stone. There was just something different about it in the detail. I don't know if it was just because of their culture or just because it was so well preserved. I'm seeing like four different warriors. Necklace thing. I thought it was really neat that it was the most detailed out of all of that wall art that we saw. Like the clothing and like what they wore. They had necklaces on and they had like headdresses on and they had really cool belts. And other people have said he might actually be a shaman. And that could be like his flow of knowledge, like his inspiration from the gods. Mm -hmm. That's, Maybe. that's an interpretation I haven't heard. That's an interesting one. I thought the big circle kind of reminded me of the phases of the moon, and I know how lots of nature is just really sacred to these people, and it had the moon kind of had like a ray going down into someone's head, and I kind of thought it was like a medicine man, and that's how he got his inspiration from like the moon and celestial bodies. Which one was your favorite? Definitely the last one, that was the Fremont Indians. The artwork didn't show any of what they ate. We're not seeing too much besides the deer. They could be hunting that deer, but then again, that's only a couple hundred years old. I think it's kind of inconclusive. It's... We are headed back to camp now. That was fun. Do you think it was fun? Yeah. Did yeah. you like it? Like yeah. It Pretty fun. Okay. What do you guys think? It was fun. You guys did good. Great. You think we did good, Gabe? <laughs> I think we did very good. No! We did very good. <laughs> good. Before we went to bed, we played our guitars next to the fire and played some songs, and then we went to bed. Today we're excavating a site. We're gonna try digging for some clues or artifacts that we might be able to find. This is what we think might be a Fremont dwelling, but we're not sure. And part of that investigation is gonna be the excavation you're gonna do today. Each of these stakes and chaining pins marks a one by one meter unit. And so we keep track of where all the artifacts come from within one meter until we get down on in that very end we think that's a floor i'm really excited because yesterday i really wasn't expecting to find anything there's even more things to be found here because nobody's ever looked at it in this part of the floor we have flagstones this part there was a hearth filled with ash charcoal and burned bone with pottery along this edge. Your grid unit is right next to that. What are some of the things you've already found? We were excavating this little quadrant right here. We found a small piece of bone. It's about that big. And we also found um, six pieces of uh, ceramic shirts. And there should be a whole bunch more in this since we haven't gotten very far. What you're gonna wanna do is keep it flat to the thing. You're just gonna scoop because it comes up pretty good. Hmm, scooping. I can do that. So if you guys wanna start. Found a rock, a big rock. What is that? Just hold that. Whoa, what'd you get? It looks like a ceramic. It looks like a big ceramic. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it is a big ceramic. It's really smooth. That looks like a piece of, of Fremont grayware or store food. Phil's going back. Wow, that's fantastic. That's part of a 1,000 year old pot. I thought it was nothing until I started digging. I think we might have found the end of it. There it is. I thought it would have been like really small, but it ended up being pretty big. Well, if they can find that, I'm sure I can find Jake's socks. So we can document it before we take it out of the ground. That is a beautiful job you've done excavating that. When we find something like that, we've documented its exact location. The difference between archeology span and treasure hunting is documentation. That's beautiful. Now that it's been documented, if you guys want to lift it up and take a look, you can pick it up with your hands. Are you serious? First hands to pick it up in a thousand years. What's it look like on the other it's side? It's just, it's... It's got like ash on the, oh, on the wow, other side. Oh, wow, it's a little bit charred and burned. It's and a cooking vessel. And you can see. That's one they would have used on the fire. It feels so amazing. It just 
like you've never felt anything like this. Just thousand year old pottery, it's just so different than regular pottery. So awesome to be holding this right now. I think it's awesome. You took my word. <laughs> then the Easting is 104.54. Why are we doing this? We're trying to determine how deep that was below the surface that it was excavated from. So how much dirt was piled on top of that? 36 centimeters. OK. <sighs> That's how you know you work, you're working hard, when you can no longer tell your own skin color. <laughs> We saved all the dirt that we dug up and we sifted through it because there could have been smaller pieces of pond. Just to make sure that we didn't miss anything while digging. Okay, go for it. We have to look through this and see if you see any more artifacts. Is there anything from the size of a lifesaver to little hishi beads? Okay, that one is just a rock. This one is just a rock too. This one I'm suspicious of, but let's look. Okay, you were right, that's just a rock too. After we finish excavating the artifact, we need to wash them up. We would fill a tub of distilled water and then we take a toothbrush and we clean out the dirt that was on it. Oh, that reminds me, I gotta brush my teeth. I always worry about if you're scrubbing a little too hard because you don't want to damage it. I think it, it's just amazing that something could survive this long without like completely being destroyed and there's something left. We did get to look at some of the other student stuff and some of it was really cool. I love the sharp objects, like one was a scraping thing and it was like this really pretty rose color. Ooh, and it's sharp. And another one was like a little <laughs> baby arrowhead this big. Yeah. She said it was cute. It was cute. Thank you for excavating and finding the biggest pottery on site. I can't wait for tomorrow. All right. <laughs> Amazing. Cucumber pineapple. Pineapple? <laughs> 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 okay, let's take a break. My face hurts. Today, we're going to check out a granary. And granaries are where they store their food. And hopefully, we'll find some food remnants. We are above a granary. When we first came into Range Creek and started recording granaries up in the cliffs, I took rock climbing lessons. This one hasn't been sampled yet, so we want to sample this one today. OK, let's do it. OK, yeah, I can't wait any longer. I've been waiting for this all week. Yeah, good job. Whoa, 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 a little help here. When we were rappelling down to the granary, we had to be extremely cautious because the ground was kind of slippery, and if you fell, you really didn't want to damage the granary. It's a piece of cake, really, isn't it? Yeah. Good job, Gates. High five. Well, this is a Fremont granary. It's very fragile. It's been here for about a 1,000 years. Let's go ahead and lift the lid. If you look inside, you can see the roof beams. And down at the bottom, there's a layer of sand and gravels. There may be food remains. Wow, it's so smooth inside of it. We found a lot of rat feces. <laughs> oh, I hope there's none of those in Jake's locker. <laughs> and little bones. Hopefully we find something, like just a little seed. I like how they put the rocks and the adobe together. It looks like they spent a lot of time on this structure. And how well preserved it is kind of shows how hard they worked on it too. It's really fascinating that things from that long ago can still be existing. And you don't really think about people way back then, but obviously there is and it's amazing how advanced they actually were. This used to be another greenery right here. It did. They're actually really well constructed or they wouldn't still be here today. Want me to find the volume of this? I took the measurements and she did all the math. I thought that was cool. 437,080 cubic centimeters. That's 437 liters. 
So 14 trips each way just to fill the granary with grain and then 14 to come back and get it later when you want to eat. From the granary, it was pretty amazing to get that much material up to it because there were two granaries there. So it would have taken twice that, like 56 loads. Try and do two scoops in about the same place into the bag. We took some pollen samples. The pollen samples tell us if there's any food particles in it or how old the dirt is. Excellent. Yes, more scooping. This is great practice for the Great Jake Locker Excavation. That looks great. Thank you so much. That's perfect. Well, now the science is done, and it's time to go back up. Are you, are you guys ready? Yeah, of course not. All right. <laughs> Climbing. I really wonder how they got up there, because even with the ropes and um, with the climbing instructor and the crevice wasn't there, and they would have to climb straight up from off the ground, because it seemed really hard. Climbing. OK. The most surprising thing about it was it's so well preserved. Hey, wait for me! It was just unreal to look at something like that. Tomorrow we're going to be presenting our final series, which is really exciting because we've worked pretty hard on these series. I don't want to tell anybody. I want it to be a complete surprise. Overall, this camp was a pretty amazing experience. It was great. It's a good lesson and a good experience for kids like us because it's really nice to just get outdoors and experience the nature. <laughs> <laughs> Step on it again with the bugs. Renee taught us a lot. We learned a lot of new things about the area. It was really cool. We learned so many things from Renee. I didn't even know like most of the things. It was so great because I had no idea anything about this place, and it's great. Hey, it's Gates, and I'm just here to tell you a little more about myself. I like to ride horses and snowboard. My favorite subjects in school are math and science. I love science because it's not like you ever stop learning. There's always something new to be learned. I started collecting rocks when I was like four. <laughs> this is my absolute favorite. My great-great-grandmother gave it to me. She always told me it was a dinosaur egg, <laughs> but that's what kind of great-grandmas do. On my quiet days, I usually like to read a book. Today we left Range Creek and we went to go see Renee at the museum. She showed us around a little bit. These are Fremont corn and beans and squash digging sticks. That's of course for planting seeds. That's a Fremont figurine that's possibly just toys, possibly just dolls. Some of the prehistoric basketry. This is an artist's reconstruction of what this person may have looked like wearing the headdress. Would you guys like to take a look at the artifacts from the site you were excavating this week? I sure. would love to. All right. These are all food remains that we found in the different granaries. And then in some of the granaries, we have grass seeds. This is Indian rice grass that's been parched, and this is Great Basin wild rye. In our granary, we haven't found anything that was completely noticeable, but they sent it in for a pollen sample, but we won't know how that turns out until a few months from now. We'll have to wait for a while to get those results. What do you guys think is going on in Range Creek a thousand years ago? We presented our theories and it was really cool because Renee actually really thinks about our theories instead of going, oh, they're just kids, they don't know anything. Okay, I'm gonna start with the wall art. That looks very professional, Jazzy. This guy kind of looks like a big horn sheep and I looked at the antler headdress that was upstairs. I think it was that, like a headdress of some sort. And then we found this big horn sheep. I'm not sure if it was a deer or a sheep but I think it was a sheep. So that suggests the sheep were probably hunted. And considering the food that they ate, there's the pot that we found and the animal bones and the little baby arrowhead. They probably hunted small animals like rabbits or birds. And then the granary was stored up so high, probably protected from rain or maybe bears or animals that could get up there. Renee thought my hypothesis was good. Most of my theory is really similar to Jazzy's. I do think what we found, like the animal bones and the pictures, really relate to what they ate. They probably ate deer and rabbit and probably some bighorn sheep. I think the Fremont were hunters and gatherers and farmers. Most of the food remains we have from the house look like they had a, a pretty important focus on the wild foods. We kind of have a surprise for you. We want you to keep this. Oh, thank you. The Indiana Jones Notebook. We wrote a little note for you. Thank you. Oh, wow. 
I think that Jazzy and Gates are very observant. They have a bright future in whatever they decide to go into, but I hope it will be archaeology. Thank you, Thank you so, so much, much for sharing this with us. This has definitely changed some ideas that I might have for my future. I think of Renee as an inspiration. I thought she was really cool. Renee's archaeology camp, I think, has had a big impact on my life. There's a lot of things that I probably wouldn't have known about myself. I probably wouldn't have discovered I actually enjoy art and I interpret it different than everyone else. I think it would it would change a little bit of my perspective on life. Big hugs. Big hugs. Ooh, careful, careful. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in that layer we have one slightly used retainer. Check. Three unsent love notes to one Missy McClure. Hey. And what appears to be a fossilized piece of toast. What? I'm hungry. Oh, <gasps> Jake, look. Ew. Lucky socks. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Iz. I don't know what I'd do without them. Or you. <laughs> yeah, anything for you, Jake. And I do mean everything. Do you recognize these? Oh, yeah. Would you guys like to do the repair work on that? Yeah, yes. I would love to. The way that we reconstruct these is by using archival materials, but a little bit on each side. We took a look at our pottery and we built it back up. How do you think this pot was shaped? It was a jar that had a rounded bottom. It was probably fairly large and came up and then came back out again. This is so amazing that we actually got to dig something like this up and it's actually ours, we found it. Our investigation is about rescue robots. We want them to give the robot human personality traits. Hello, side girls. Go us! We went stargazing and we couldn't see many stars. Light pollution is actually a really big environmental problem. Star party! That's <laughs> scuba. We both became interested in the health of the reefs and it became this full on investigation. I used to think being a scientist was wearing a lab coat. It's going to be really cool. Funding for Sci Girls is provided by the following. The National Science Foundation, supporting education and research across all fields of science and engineering. The National Science Foundation, where discoveries begin. Math, science, and curious young minds. They're our future. That's why ExxonMobil and former astronaut Sally Ride created the Sally Ride Science Academy to help teachers inspire our students so they may become the scientists and engineers of tomorrow. Set up a profile, find new friends, create a page for your science project, watch SciGirl's videos, and have fun! So come on, be a SciGirl on PBSKidsGo.org. See you there! Bye!